Welcome to another Bidwix video on SQL statements. In this one, we're going to be talking about outer joins. Perhaps you saw our other video on inner joins. If not, I recommend you have a look. If you've seen that video, then you know that inner joins will return results from a select statement where two tables have fields in common, but they will not return results where the two tables do not have fields in common. So for instance, if I have customers and I have sales and I join the tables together, I'm only going to get results where I have customers which have made sales. Any customers which have not been involved in any sales will not be returned. So I get the inner results. As you'll see in this video, outer joins will not only return the inner results where there are matches between the two tables, but it will also return the outer results where no matches were found. If you want to follow along with the example given in this video, download Bidwix Outer Zip from the URL in the description of the video. From inside that zip file, copy out the SQL script, and then double click the SQL file. This is going to use a database called Bidwix Outer. First, let's create the database by right-clicking the Databases folder, choose New Database, and call the database Bidwix Outer, and click OK. Select the script, and click Execute. So now you'll see you have a database, and inside that database, there are a couple of tables. Let's go ahead, click on the database, choose a new query, and I'm going to show you what's inside the two tables. I have two simple tables here, one that has flights and one that has planes. And I want you to notice something. In my flight table, I have a plain ID. And in the plane table, I have a plain ID. So this will show you which flight has which plane associated with it. Now something to notice about these two tables is that I have a plane, plane number four, that doesn't have any flights. And I also have a flight, flight number two, that doesn't yet have a plane associated with it. For those of you that missed the video on inner joins, let's have a quick review on an inner join by selecting from these two tables only where they have values in common. You'll see down here in my results set, I only get three values back because these are the only three rows where I have planes that match flights. So let's see how outer joins differ from an inner join. First, let's see our two tables again. Let's try a left outer join. A left outer join is going to show you all the rows from the left table plus the rows from the right table where there are matches with the left table. In this example, I'm going to use flight as my left table. Now how do I know which is the left and which is the right table? It's a very simple. Find the word join and take a look at the statement using the join keyword. Whichever table falls on the left side of the word join is the left table. 
and whichever table falls on the right side of the word join is the right table. Let me execute this. And what you will see is I have all the rows from the left table, flight, and I have only rows from the right table, plane, where there were matches. So in this case, I have all my rows. There were no matches for planes for flight number two, so it shows up as null. Now a right outer join is basically the mirror image of a left outer join. But in this case, instead of getting all the rows from the left table, you get all the rows from the right table plus the rows where there are matches between the two tables. Let me rewrite this, but using a right outer join. Remember that in SQL, you can highlight one statement and execute just that statement. Now that I've turned that into a right outer join, recall again, that right refers to what table is on the right side of the keyword join, which is in this case, plane. So in this result set, I get all my planes returned. And I also get all rows where the planes matched with flights, but I also get nulls where there was no match with a flight. So something funny you might notice here is that the arbitrary location of the tables, flight and plane, as they surround the word join, determine the outcome. If I take the table flight from the left side and move it over to the right, and take plane and move it over to the left, and then run these two queries together, then these two queries return the same data. I've got all four of my planes, and I've only got the flights where there are matches. So it doesn't really matter which side of the join statement you put the table. What matters is whether you know whether you need a left or a right join based on where you place those tables. This may seem a bit silly, but that's the way that outer joins work. Now I'm going to switch back my queries because I want to show you another very useful function for outer joins. Let me run these two queries together. So again you can see that my left join with flight as the left table, meaning flight returns all rows, has all my flights, but not all my planes. And my query where I do a right join returns all the right rows, in other words, all the plane rows, but not all the flight rows. And by adding a where clause, you can now identify some very interesting things about your data set. For instance, here I know that all my flights are going to be returned, but I'd like to know which of my flights don't have a plane ID associated with them. So all I have to do is add a WHERE clause and say WHERE my plane ID is null. Now I'm returned the single row that has no plane associated with it. I can also see which planes don't have flights. So while inner joins show me when a condition exists. Using this simple trick, an outer join will show me when conditions don't exist, when customers don't have orders, 
when flights don't have planes. I want to point out that I've used some capabilities here that I didn't explain, but which are explained in the other video on inner joins. For instance, the use of F to refer to the table flight so that I don't have to type the name of the table over and over again. You can watch that video on inner joins to get a full explanation on how to do that. Something else that you should know is that outer joins are the only types of joins that can be either left or right. So the outer keyword is completely optional. I can take it out of both of these queries and I'm still going to get the same results. So that can save you some time when typing. Now let's take a look at one last type of outer join called the full outer join. The full outer join is essentially a combination of a left and a right outer join. So it's going to show you every row in the left table, every row that matches with the right table, as well as every row in the right table, whether or not there are matches between the two tables. So let's take one of these queries and turn it into a full outer join. Now you can see I have five rows returned. I've got the row returned where there was a flight, but there were no planes. I also have the row returned where there was no, where there was no flight and there was a plane. So the full outer join is like combining both a right and a left outer join. And now it's time for the bonus query, the cross join. So here are my two tables again. Each of them has four rows. If I do a cross join with those two tables, what I get is called a Cartesian product. It's a result of multiplying the number of rows in one table by the number of rows in the other and actually resulting in every possible combination. In this result set, I see every plane combined with every flight. This may seem like a nonsensical result set, but there are at least a couple of good uses for it. Number one, it's a quick way to generate a lot of data if you need to create some sample data. And number two, when you're building data warehouses, oftentimes dimensions can use Cartesian products to provide every possible combination of the dimension attributes. So that's a topic for another day when we're discussing data warehouses. Please remember to subscribe.